Uh, hi, my name is Charles Beckinsale. I'm a 33-year-old park builder and snowboarder from Jindabyne, Australia. The park stuff started out for me when I was uh, 15 years old. Um, I used to volunteer on the park crew at Threadbow uh, under Matty Gilder, like a long time ago now. And then I ended up getting a paid job uh, when Benny Hazlitt took over as park manager. And then from there I just worked day crew until I uh, got to a point I realised I wanted to drive cats and have more of an impact on, um, on how things were shaped. So. I was about 21 at that stage, and um, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty dangerous mix. I mean, for someone that really enjoys riding jumps and, and park features, being given the keys to a cat is just uh, one way to work yourself to death. Uh, I'd always, I mean, if someone flicked me the keys now and said, build something you want to ride, I would jump in happily and do it for free just to, uh, you know, ride stuff I was stoked on. So it just led to years and years of just hours sitting in the cat, thinking up ideas and, and building stuff that you're happy with and uh, tweaking jumps that you didn't feel were perfect. And yeah, it's just kept bringing you back in and back in. Yeah, it was a pretty uh, exciting time. I mean, I'd done 12 years at Threadbow before that and um, Parrish just seemed to really want to drive things pretty heavily park-wise and a friend of mine Rich Phillips had kind of gone over there and, and started as the marketing guy and kind of kept talking to me about it and uh, one day we just decided you know it'd be just an exciting new opportunity to pursue and I'd been working with a lot of the national teams and, and top riders overseas in Whistler for, for the time leading up to that and had a lot of good contacts and people that wanted to continue to ride my features so when I went to Paris where I kind of invited a bunch of them out um, and then, you know, Torstein, uh, Hogamo and Market Morris and a few of those guys came out with some of the teams as well. And then the following year, everyone turned up and it's been, yeah, five years of just mayhem ever since. Yeah, so I ended up going to Whistler and uh, just starting on their, on their park rooming team on the Whistler side. Um, and then I did some work there that uh, people were pretty happy with and uh, then I got invited over to Blackcomb to build the, the big park the following year and the, and the big jump line there because that was the one I was riding mostly and had an interest in and then from there uh, a lot of the riders that had projects and things on were asking if I'd be able to build for them and some of my friends were pro skiers like Russell Henshaw had projects with matchstick films and things and, and they were requesting me as the builder for the, for the photo shoot projects up top so I was lucky enough to kind of get an in and from that, I just ended up being um, being the guy that was building all the film shoot projects every spring and, and a lot of the special projects throughout the year. So it, was, um, it wasn't privately, it was as an employee of the resort. So it was, a, it was a pretty exciting time for me. Yeah, it's kind of like the, uh, the drug that drives you. I mean, to, to build something that, you know, could potentially make some history within the sport. I mean, in our world, it's a really big deal. A lot of other people don't really care. <laughs> but um, I mean, f for me, seeing Russell, who's now my brother-in-law, to do uh, one of the first triples in skiing on a jump that was bigger than anything we'd kind of seen at the time as far as, you know, the, the pitch of the takeoff and how high they were going. And the thing was 90 foot takeoff to knuckle. It was, um, it was a pretty exciting time to just watch some pretty crazy stuff happen. I'm 33 now, and once I hit 30, uh, I was out of working visas with Bristol Blackcomb, being Australian. And uh, from that point, um, I was pretty unsure about the, the future and uh, what, what was going to happen. Um, my wife and I, she, she became pregnant with our now son. And uh, it was, it was a, I was scratching my head as far as what I was going to do with my life and where it was all leading. Because up until that point, we'd just been having a great time, you know, just working for the resorts. and. You know, for me, I had a sled and a truck in Whistler and it was all about the lifestyle and, and snowboarding and not so much uh, thinking about the future. But at that point, everything kind of hit home and um, yeah, I had to get on my, uh, my hustle a bit to, to line up jobs and I became a contractor. And um, luckily enough for me, I had, had good contacts and people that wanted to work with me still. So I ended up just flying around uh, yeah, Canada and Europe and um, yeah, just, just doing jobs wherever they'd pop up and uh, mostly for national teams and then stuff like Red Bull and Monster as well but um, it became more of a uh, 
you'd be you'd be working hard for a two week block and then some time off to go shredding and then you'd be working hard again for another block but um it's definitely exciting because it's never the same project it's always different and it's always in a new place so it's um it's a cool way to see the world um stomping grounds came about just because of uh i guess i noticed there was a lot of you know top tier athletes following my work from you know places like canada to uh to perisher and um, I always got a lot of emails asking me where I was building and what was happening in certain times of the year and I saw there was an appetite to kind of do something a little bit different and basically what the Stomping Grounds is, is a, it's like crowdfunding for the ideal park and pipe uh, location and Sasfay's turned out to be a great spot for it and every year we go there and, and we build exactly what everyone wants to shred so it's a, it's a really fun project. Yeah, last year with the Olympics was crazy. It was a lot, a lot of work and a lot of, a lot of people turned up which is awesome. But the bookings this year look pretty steady as well, so um, it's, it's nice to see the continued support, even in a quiet year. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had a couple of uh, sleepless months once the visa thing came, came about, and I uh, was honestly looking like, you know, I wouldn't be able to drive cats anywhere. I scrambled and took a couple of jobs that I shouldn't have in Austria at the time. Um, just to try and keep my hand in it. But once I got there, I realized, you know, my son had just been born. I'd just done the first stomping grounds. It wasn't that, it wasn't in a bad situation, but I was terrified I was gonna be uh, kind of out of the game and, um, and starting to think about, you know, should I get a job as a mature age apprentice as a carpenter or something like that. And um, yeah, it was a serious, serious thought at the time, but um, everything's kind of worked out and people have supported me. So um, yeah, doing just fine, it's great. Yeah, I mean, the snowboarding has become a little bit less, but um, taking this season off work um, and not, no longer working with Perisher has been, um, yeah, just quite, quite a nice change of pace. So, I mean, to be home and just be able to go snowboarding and hang out with my son and my wife has just been amazing. And uh, it just kind of gives you a bit, bit of a reset and lets you build your energy back up for, uh, for the hectic North American winter where you're just back-to-back -back projects for the, for the next seven months. But, yeah, it's... Um, if I was 15 and I looked to where I'm at right now, I'd be very happy. But <laughs> wouldn't have imagined it turned out like this. Future's looking good. I mean, uh, with the spare time I have on my hands, I'm kind of like thinking about new projects and new stuff I could be doing uh, within skiing and snowboarding and park building and project related stuff. And, uh, yeah, I mean, right now we're getting ready for the stomping grounds again in October in Sasfe. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna bring the wife and kid over for that one, which will be fun. And then from there, I think it'll be yeah, back to Canada for some work with the Canadian team. And um, yeah, just back on the road again for the rest of the North American season building, so.